Hey guys, this is Izzy from Endless RVing, and in today's video, it's going to be part one of a series of, I don't know how many, but it's going to be part one of things that you should have on your RV. This is going to be what you see behind me, the 12 things I think are most important to have on your RV. So you're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. We're going away to get your back, check the tag, decision is So guys, bear with me, my memory's bad. I have a piece of paper so I can read everything. I don't want you guys to miss anything. So these are 12 things that are absolutely essential if you own an RV. You don't have to keep them all on board, although most of them you will. But if you're owning an RV, especially you newbies out there, the dealership's not gonna tell you about this. They're gonna give you your one hour, three hour orientation, and then you're on your way swimming with the big fishes. So if you keep these things on board, you will be using them all the time and you will definitely benefit from having them. So come follow me. First thing everybody should have, if you own an RV, two-way radios. Uh, why do we use two-way radios? Myself and MJ, we got these day one when we first got our travel trailer now almost two years ago. Um, these are made by Arc Shell. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. I don't remember how much they were. Um, they don't have a long range, it might be two miles, but what we use these for is uh, two reasons. A, when we're uh, breaking up and we're either arriving at camp and leaving at camp, we're using these. One person's driving, the other person's eyes. Uh, you see behind me, this is a 37 foot class A. It weighs over 25, 000, uh, 24,000 pounds. You have limited vision when you're driving this thing, meaning I can see behind me limited with the camera. I can see a good amount in front of me. Driver's side, I can see uh, passenger side, huge blind spot, but what's even more important, up top, I can't see anything. So that means branches, any anything that's low lying, I can't see it. So I rely 100% on MJ's eyes to be looking up, down, and to the sides around me. And when she's 37 feet back, there's no way, yelling is not gonna work. So with these radios, she's able to communicate with me where to go when we're pulling out of our tight spot here, or when we're backing into a campground. These things are worth every cent. Please, please, please invest in some two-way radios. They don't have to be these, but just something that you'll be able to communicate for your own safety and to keep your rig in good shape. Keeps the fighting to a minimum yes, too. Yeah, keeps the fighting to a minimum. <laughs> Second thing you should definitely invest in. This thing I think cost me five bucks. It's not a fancy one. I think uh, five or seven dollars at um, Harbor Freight. It's a tire gauge. Uh, pressure monitor, pressure gauge. Uh, this one goes up to 100, 107 and a half pounds. I set my uh, tires to 100 pounds cold. It is very, 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 very important that you have the proper tire pressure in your tires. That is not only with a Class A, that's especially important in uh, the towables and your um, travel trailers and your fifth wheels. A lot of times those are cheaper tires. I have commercial grade tires on here. Um, these are made for you know heavy loads. Some of those other ones are not. Tire pressure is extremely important. If you're underinflated, it's gonna cause heat buildup. You're gonna really increase your chance for a blowout. So before any trip, I'm checking the tire pressure. MJ could attest to this. Uh, it's been good so far, but I check it. It's gotta be at 100 pounds. If not, I'm gonna show you what the next thing I have uh, right here. Now, obviously, a lot of people can't carry this on board. I don't carry this on board. This is just a Husky eight gallon air compressor. The reason I have this one is because it goes up to 150 PSI. This gives me plenty of juice for what I need to fill up these uh, big 22 and a half inch tires. This is not the one you have to get. It's all gonna be dependent on what your needs are, but uh, it's kind of hard going to a gas station and, and pulling in. If you're in a towable, you could be you know, upwards of 50 feet between truck and uh, and fifth wheel. So keep one, have it at home. Please check before you leave and uh, keep on that pressure, uh, the tire pressure. Keep monitoring that. Now, guys, just keep in mind, this is just a list of 12. There's way more things you should have on board. 
um, and this is just my opinion, what's, what's really, really important to keep on board. So there's more stuff that you should have, but we're gonna continue going. Third thing on the list, uh, we're gonna come over here actually. These tire covers, solar tire covers. Um, for us, we have Michelin's uh, 22 and a half inch tires. The biggest detriment to tires, especially on class A's, they're not gonna break down because of usage and mileage because we're not, these things can go 60,000 miles. Why they're gonna break down is because of the UV out there and from uh, just dry rot. So putting these on, I think this was 30 bucks for four of them. It keeps them protected from the sun when I'm not using it. When we go to camp, I put them on. You can think I'm a freak, I don't care because these tires are 600 a pop and there's six tires on here. If you're going with a tag axle, you got eight tires. So if I can get seven or eight years out of these, people can laugh at me. That's number three. Okay, number four. And I see this at campgrounds, people not using these things. Guys, I have a surge protector built in to our, our Numar. There's a surge protector built in there. I don't care. I'm putting an external surge protector. This one is by Progressive Industries. It's an EMS surge protector, 50 amp. They also make 30 amp ones. It's gonna depend on what your needs are. Um, you want the EMS because it's not only gonna protect from your uh, surges, your open grounds, your open neutral, it's gonna protect you from low voltage, which can damage, um, especially if you have residential equipment on there, residential appliances, it could damage that. These things aren't cheap. This was a little over $300. But I tell you, it is way cheaper than destroying the electrical system in your rig. You do that, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. So how these things work, simply this goes plugged into your, your um, pedestal at the camp. You then plug in your rig's power here. It's gonna run through a diagnostic. If there's any problems, it's gonna cut the power off to your rig before it's gonna get into your rig. It has already helped us when we were down in uh, Virginia Beach. There was an open neutral on our pedestal and it kept cutting off, cutting off, cutting off. And I didn't know why the, the, uh, the breaker was tripping on the pedestal. I went and I read it, open neutral. Lord and behold, about two hours later, a uh, fuse blew out in the campground. We didn't have power for a couple hours. I had to kick the generator on, but I, I don't know what would happen if there was some kind of surge. You know, you, you don't want to be burning stuff. These things are expensive and they're even more expensive to uh, repair. So invest in that that is essential it doesn't have to be that one but invest in some kind of storage protector number five water hose so this is a 25 foot this is a, a drinking water hose uh, it's drinking it's made by camco the reason why it's a drinking one you won't get that nasty water hose taste like a garden hose this is made specifically for fresh water only use it for fresh water don't swap it out when you're cleaning out your black tank that's not sanitary, but definitely get one of these. It doesn't have to be a 25 footer. Um, I know a lot of uh, places when you buy a new one, they'll give you a little 10 footer. That's probably not gonna be enough. 25 seems to be enough for us. You can use that 10 footer as an extension, as an emergency if you need it. Also, water filter. I've said this in other videos. We don't drink the water that's coming from the campgrounds. I don't know what's in that water, but we still run it through a water filter. Um, you know, we still bathe, we still use that water. Uh, if we need to cook and boil something, we use it. So this, I believe, is good for 400 gallons. You get two of these for 20 bucks. They sell them at Walmart. They sell them on Amazon. It's worth the cash. I go through uh, one or two a season. Let's go to number six. Guys, I don't know if you're familiar. The stuff on your roof uh, that seals all those cutouts on your roof, your air conditioning vents, your... Um, your skylights, any other cutouts you have on your roof, they are sealed with this stuff called Dicor. Dicor is, is a lap sealant. This is a self-leveling lap sealant in white. Okay, I've, I, I've used this already. Uh, I've used this, if, if you spring a leak in your roof, instead of uh, having a shower inside your rig, you go up there, find where it's coming from, and you know plug it up. This is also, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to maintain your seals. You can choose on paying and going to a, uh, uh, an RV shop where, where they're gonna you know, rake you over the coals, or you could choose to do it yourself. This stuff scrapes up easy. You put it down at a nice speed, it levels itself out. 
it's, it starts to dry, it's waterproof in five minutes and within two days it's completely bonded and you're good to go. On that same note, I also keep a turn -a bond tape. This is for an emergency, if I spring some emergency leak, you can see it right here. You slap this stuff on and it's gonna give you a watertight seal instantly. Haven't used it yet, I keep up with my, uh, my seals, but for some reason a branch comes down, breaks off, rips my roof, I can slap this on until I get it, I'm able to repair. All right, next, fuses. We've already used these. Most of the stuff on here that I'm showing you, except that uh, Turnabond tape, we've used it. So, fuses. Um, all your RVs, your towables, your fifth wheels, they're gonna have some kind of fuse box. Find the fuses that you use. You can get these on Amazon. Get a variety of fuses that you can see here. I have from uh, two amps up to 40 amps, as long, along with the tool. I keep this on board. We've already used it. Something wasn't working. Went to the fuse panel, sure enough, fuse was blown. So instead of not being able to use that circuit, I go underneath, get my fuse, pop it up, pop it in, and we're done in less than a minute. We're back on the road, we're rolling. Invest in it. Ah, number eight. Good old level, it's been around forever. Babe, how many times do we use this thing? <laughs> Many every trip. Uh, Harbor Freight again, stuff made in China, whatever. It's cheap, it works. This was less than five bucks. We have auto leveling on here. I'll tell you right now, the auto leveling doesn't always work perfectly. Um, there's been times where I auto level and then I have to self adjust it a little bit, you know, manually adjust it. So get a level. There's, there's a million different types. It doesn't have to be RV specific. If you want to spend the money on it, go right ahead, but get a level because leveling your coach is very important. It's gonna help uh, some appliances work. The, the coach needs to be level. Um, when your slides are going out, even if your coach is not level, you may have a hard time opening your entrance door because the body is, is uh, torqued and twisted. So it's gotta be level, all right? Invest in a, a cheap level. On that same note, leveling blocks. Now I have these left over. I have these guys left over from uh, when we had our travel trailer. I didn't have uh, auto leveling there. But they're just, these are almost like Lego blocks. And what you do is, depending on you have to level, you'll build up the one side of your rig with these uh, blocks. We have two, two packs of these. I still keep them on board. We haven't really had to use them. I have the snap pads on our uh, jacks and those work pretty well. And I have a lot more um, ability to level with the uh, hydraulic jacks. But I still keep them on board just in case. I'm not gonna get rid of them. These are made by uh, Lynx levelers. I got them on Amazon, and I'll put the link below. I, I don't, I shouldn't have to say this, but I will anyway, because I've seen it happen. Uh, tire chocks, these should go in automatically. Once you're leveled, emergency brake on. If you have a towable, chalk your tires. If you have a, uh, I'm sorry, if you have a Class A, if you have a towable, uh, fifth wheel, or travel trailer, you got to chalk. Um, and don't ask me how I don't know, because we had a trailer, which I forgot to chalk and it fell over and we had to get the, uh, the campground. They had one of those bulldozers that had to come and lift it up. So there was no damage in that, but I forgot to chalk the one wheel and it happened. So I chalk every time now. These are cheap, these are on Amazon also. These are a couple of bucks each. If you're camping, more than likely, you're gonna be in an area that doesn't have a lot of light or is low light condition. So we have dogs when we go out in the morning or at night, when they gotta go out, they gotta go out. I got a headlamp, I've had this thing forever. I used to use it uh, when I ran early in the morning at night, I still use it for that. And then just a little flashlight that I, we picked up from Cabela. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just some kind of uh, light from when you're in low light conditions. You don't want to be tripping over branches and, and everything else. Keep some on board, in addition to batteries for them also. Okay, uh, number 10 is going to be, so, so when you buy an RV, they're going to give you a little starter pack. Most of the stuff in there is crap. Uh, the only thing I had used for was the small, the short uh, hose that they gave you. I used it as an extension. The sewer hose they give you is crap. Um, that's it's gonna break on you and you're gonna have poop everywhere so 
We invested in, and we've had this now for at least one season. It's called Rhino, the Rhino Sewer. You see it's starting to get a little wear here. I'm gonna have to get a new one. But this is extendable. You gotta take the tops off. There's some air in there, but this extends out, I believe, to 20 feet. Um, it's a little more heavy duty. The last thing you wanna do is have a, a poop Sunday um, spraying on you when you empty your black tank. Uh, in addition, there is a, actually goes over here. You would take that cap off, you put this on the end, and that goes right into your sewer outlet at your campground, okay? And it's clear so you can see what's coming out. We always love oh, doing that. Fun. Jason loves that. He loves seeing what comes <laughs> it's out. It's fun to watch. But what it is important is that you want to see if you're flushing out your black tank that, it, you know, clear liquid's coming out. Now you know you're, you're cleaned up and you're good to go. Links will be below for that also. All right. Pretty important and pretty cheap. And this stuff I love. Okay. Damp rid. Um, I think anybody who knows anything about RVs will tell you what is going to destroy your RV is moisture. That's going to be either coming from the roof because you didn't maintain it and that's where most of your leaks are going to come from or if you're in humid uh, environments or you're in the summer um, as you know humidity is going to build up it's going to cause mold it's going to cause different issues this stuff is called damperid uh, in this rig we have three of them one in the bedroom one in the uh sorry one in the bedroom one in the like kitchen portion and then i put another one in the bath in the bathroom excuse me um, what this does, it captures the moisture from the air. It comes folded up like this. You take it out, you unfold it, you hang it. They also have ones that come in buckets. I like this one for the following reason. When you hang it and the water, it collects the water and accumulates, it comes down here. You see that? This is probably, what, a week and a half mm -hmm. that we put this in? Mm -hmm. And mind you, we were last weekend uh, we were in there and we're running the air conditioning and it pulls out a lot of moisture of the air. So, and we don't live in a super humid environment, but that's how much water is collected out of the air. So I like to keep the humidity in the air, 47%. This helps do it. These are about 10 bucks for a pack of three. And they'll last you about a month once this fills up, get rid of it, put some new ones in. You don't have to do it in the winter if you're cold, but in the summer you should do it. And last but not least, guys, you don't have to do it, but Listen, you're playing Russian roulette. When you go to these campgrounds, you don't know how well they're maintaining the, uh, the electrical boxes in there as well. You don't know what the pressure is coming out of those, uh, those, pressure, those hoses, the um, spigots, is that how you say it? Spigot. Spigots. Spigots. <laughs> you don't know how much pressure is coming out of there. These lines in here, they're PEX lines. Um, I think they can take up to 100 PSI, but I don't even risk it. I got a pressure regulator. I think this was like 40 bucks on Amazon. I have it set to 45 pounds. So no matter where I go, if it's 100 pounds or it's 50 pounds, this is set at 45 pounds. And for me, 45 pounds is enough. We have ample pressure in the shower, enough pressure in all the faucets, toilet, it all works. And I have peace of mind that I'm safe. We have 45 pounds. The other, one more thing before I go, I'm gonna tell you, and this is not on the list. This is just something I wanna tell you. When you leave your rig and you're going out for a little bit, um, and, and this has happened to people, uh, what I do and what I would advise newbies to do, you may not think of it, go to your main water, uh, the water source, shut it off. And the reason I tell you that is that if you spring a leak and that water source is on, when you come back, you're gonna have a swimming pool in your rig and you know it, it's all she wrote from there. So shut that off. If some reason a, uh, you spring a leak, you're gonna only leak out what's pressurizing the system. You're not gonna have a continuous source of water just pouring into your uh, into your rig. Other thing I do is I, for those that have propane, I shut the propane off. If, if I'm not in the coach, propane is off and the water is off. So guys, uh, I don't know how long that video was. This is, like I said, this is only the top 12 things I could think of. There's a lot of other things that you should be keeping on the rake, but I can go on for two hours. I'm gonna to try to cut this up into uh, several different videos. I hope this was helpful to uh, newbies out there. I see a lot of questions on the forums. I go on those forums, I'm active on there. A lot of questions. The dealerships are not gonna help you. They're not gonna answer your questions. I'm here to answer your questions, to help you guys out, to help you save money, and help you have an enjoyable camping and RVing experience, because that's what it's all about. These things are expensive. 
and you don't want to have a headache when you're going out. So if you like the video that you just saw, please, please, please subscribe below. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell and subscribe. Thumbs up, like the video, comment and share with your friends what that does for us. And I'm going through the same spiel every, every video. What that does for us, that allows us to grow on the YouTube algorithms. So when somebody searches something, we pop up, more people click on it, more people see. We grow as a channel. It helps you guys out there, the viewers, which is what this is all about. So for myself and MJ, who's on the camera, there's her uh, signature thumbs up. We thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the road.